Coming up, Fujifilm has announced a new camera that's half as much as the X100. Is it half as good? I'll have the review next on Before You Buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All stream directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, visit netflix.com slash twit. Welcome to Before You Buy, Twitch product review show. On this show, we get together a bunch of products, then we figure out who at the beautiful Twit Brick House would like to review it, and it's always a lot of fun. Uh, one of the persons who almost always takes the cell phones, though, well, I guess that's not true, but Nicole Lee, it's, it's her area of expertise. She produces our show and has this review of the latest, the LG Viper from Sprint. Nicole, take it away. I'm Nicole Lee from Twit and Before You Buy, and I'm reviewing the LG Viper from Sprint. The Viper is um, Sprint's sort of mid-range offering right here and it's um, considered a sort of budget LTE smartphone because this is one of a few Sprint smartphones to support its um, upcoming 4G LTE network and that's one thing that we do have to say that Sprint doesn't have its LTE network nationwide just yet so this is sort of in ready or in preparation for uh, the future 4G LTE network that Sprint will provide. The other interesting thing about the LG Viper is that it's considered a eco-friendly phone. It's made out of 50% recycled plastic. Uh, it comes with a charger that will sort of turn off charging once you're, once the phone is sort of full up on a uh, battery. So it's kind of an eco-friendly phone if you're interested in that kind of thing. On the front here is a four inch display. So that's kind of interesting because a lot of Android smartphones these days are sort of 4.3 screen size or bigger. And this is sort of on the smaller end of the Android screen size if uh, you're interested in that. On the front here is a uh, sort of an LCD display. Uh, LG claims it has a 700 nits of brightness. It's super bright Nova LCD display. It's pretty bright as you can see here. Um, I didn't have any, any two much complaints about it, around 800 by 480 resolution, so it's not as sharp as other um, phones, but for its price range, it's pretty good. Underneath that, you do get the usual um, Android hot sensor keys. On the side, you do get the usual um, volume controls. On top here is the headset jack, the usual screen lock key. Uh, behind the battery here, you'll see a um, micro SD card slot as well. The phone comes with four gigabytes internal memory, but you can supplement that with like up to 32 gigabytes of micro SD storage. The LG Viper ships with Android 2.3 gingerbread, not ice cream sandwich, so that's a little bit disappointing, especially since the Viper has a 1.2 gigahertz um, dual core processor from uh, Qualcomm. So you would think it would support ICS, but so that's a little bit disappointing. Um, the interface itself is quite clean. Um, LG doesn't have too busy of a skin or interface like HTC's Sense or Samsung's TouchWiz. LG is pretty clean as far as the interface goes. Uh, you do get a little bit of Sprint bloatware, you know, the usual Sprint ID, like all the different Sprint apps. So that's a little bit disappointing if you want a sort of a cleaner operating system. On the back of the phone here is a 5 megapixel camera with LCD flash. The camera here also supports 1080p video recording. The photo quality I thought was quite good. Um, very nice crisp colors, very vibrant. I did think the shutter speed was kind of lagging in some points and the flash washes out a lot of things. So I would try to use natural light as much as possible. There's also a front facing VGA camera not that great, but good enough for the usual video conferencing. The LG Viper also comes with NFC support and Google Wallet pre-installed, which is good if you're into the whole Google Wallet NFC thing. Now for the pros and cons of the LG Viper. The pros are that the screen is nice and bright, the camera quality is pretty good, and it's made out of 50% recycled plastic, so it's quite eco-friendly. 
The cons are that even though it supports 4G LTE theoretically, we can't really test it, so it's quite untested at this point. It's also a little bit bulky, as you can see here, and it does come with a bunch of Sprint blower. Also, even though it has a 1.2 GHz dual-core processor, we found it was a little bit laggy at some points, and it only comes with Android 2.3 gingerbread, not ice cream sandwich. Now, for whether you should buy, try, or don't buy, I have to say it's a try. It does have a pretty good screen quality, pretty good camera quality as well, and it's quite affordable at only $100, but the 4G LTE network is not tested just yet. It's not nationwide just yet, and it's only gingerbread for now. There's no ice cream sandwich update as far as I know. So I would say wait until Sprint rolls out its 4G LTE network and wait until this gets ice cream sandwich before putting down the money for it. I'm Nicole Lee, this has been my review of the LG Viper. Thank you, Nicole Lee. Now it's time to review, believe it or not, a keyboard called The Vengeance. Our flow master is here, Alex Gumpel. Alex is responsible for getting all the video from us to you. And so here we have the Vengeance uh, mechanical <laughs> keyboard. Oh, no, no. This says IBM. This is oh, a... I'm sorry. This is the wrong one. I, I couldn't tell because it's mechanical like the Vengeance keyboard is. But, you know, these are classic old keyboards with the buckling springs. Buckling springs. a certain feel. That, yeah, a lot of people really love these. And uh, some companies have gone and tried to recreate oh, it. Oh, they cherish those. Yeah. But it's always kind of difficult to do. And no one can really get this it quite right. This is not that. This is not quite that. It's mechanical, but it's not buckling springs mechanical so it, it has it has a very nice feel to it, it when you are typing it's it's very just smooth and it's yeah. long uh, key presses uh, it's but kind it of doesn't noisy. have the same resistance no so it's it, noisy it, it, is buckling key without the same kind right of so it's soft kind of like a membrane keyboard but right. it, but it still has that that you know when it hits the back it, it has that feel to but it look uh, at all the stuff it does well first of all I, the first thing I notice is the thickness of this cord. yes yeah, so okay one thing about this is it actually has two USB cables in it Okay. It goes in there. Um, one is a pass-through uh, cable that uh, goes to a port in the back. So it, instead of having an unpowered USB hub in the keyboard, it's actually got a pass-through with power, so you can plug your phone in and so, charge to that. So that way you get a USB powered USB right. on the back. Okay, that's cool. So that's, so that's and it's a, a non-tangle uh, uh, yeah, cord, but, non -tangle, but i got to tell you, be prepared for a very <laughs> thick cord. Yes, it's <laughs> unwieldy. It's already <laughs> making a mess around here. Um, right. Okay, so it's a gaming keyboard, and it has these... Um, these keycaps for the wisest keys and one through six. That's what the red is. Okay. Um, so the idea is that is they're, they're kind of contoured, so it's it kind of curves inward, so you can kind of feel the edges of but the keys. But you can't move these around. These are what's red. So for instance, I'm a lefty, so I always reassign the you know ASD keys over here. That's not going to help me because I can't. Well, it, you, you might be able to. It's it's meant for these keys, but um, it comes with this handy carrying case as well as wrist. Uh, Rest. That's a wrist rest. Okay. Um, and and op more, it opens like there magic. <laughs> there we go. So it has a oh, handy tool. There's there's extra keys. So when you're not in gaming mode, you can just pop these right oh, off. Interesting. Wow, that actually is quite easy. And it'd be good for cleaning as well. Right. And you could you know remove the whole keyboard. You rearrange the keys and screw someone up. You have a lot of fun with that. So. So if you don't that's... like the red keycaps, you can you can put them back. Make sure you put those in the right yes. place. Yes. Well, you know, I'm just... A D S F. D S A W. A F G. Well, let's see. D. Where's D? I think it's there. Yeah. yeah. You know what we a recommend we is uh, taking a picture before you disassemble your keyboard. So you can do that. It's also got the number keys. So you go what back a... to a real keyboard and not have to worry it. about the contour. Got it. Uh, it's got a, a textured uh, space bar, so you can't. It's easy to hit that. Right. Uh, I presume that's also for gaming. It's a Windows keyboard, so we have the Windows keys. Now, one thing I like about it is it's a standard keyboard layout. A lot of keyboards these days do like stupid things like having a big curved space bar or right. in large keys or rearranging stuff over here. This is just the standard regular keyboard layout, which is very nice. And Important to that. me is the T arrangement of the right, upper, inverted T for the arrow keys. I just really think that's important. And this is a big keyboard. It has a, a number pad. It has the extra keys here, function keys on the top. And then it has some special buttons. These are what? Right, just media keys. So it's got stop, uh, back, scrolls. forward, play, and that's volume, okay. the mute button. Uh, it's got this button here, which is a uh, Windows key lock button. So when you're in a game, you can turn this on, which oh. stops the Windows key <laughs> from opening you. up the start menu. I hate that when I'm playing a game. And, you know, most games should lock that out. But if it doesn't, and many games right. didn't used to, and you hit Windows key, pain in the rear. Right, so that prevents that, which is a nice yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, uh, How much is this? It's expensive. It's $109. Okay. So... You know, if if you really want it, if you're like if you're really picky about your keyboards and you're a gamer, 
you know, maybe it's worth it in the investment. Um, if you're just kind of casual and don't care, then no, that's not really worth it. Let's get to pros and cons. So us. pros and cons. Well, con, it's expensive, uh, right. like I said. Um, pro is uh, is the, the I, I wasn't too, like, I didn't think the, the uh, contoured WASD keys would be very nice or, like, really matter much. But actually, it kind of does. With, with the way that they're beveled on the edge, you can, it's really good for feeling where the edges of where your walking keys are. Mm -hmm. so, that's actually a very good pro. Um, so these, these walking keys are different than, I see, they have right. a higher edge on the yeah, left. Yeah, and, and so the A is up on the left and the, and the so D really is know where your right. So is. you can really feel where that is. Yeah. Um, the con is there's no backlight, which may not be a big deal um, depending on where you have your keyboard. I like to game in the dark. I, I like to have my keyboard in a drawer, which yeah. means that the screen light doesn't really go on it, so you can't see it much, right. but it's not that big a deal. This uh, is metal, which is interesting. Right. The build, so is build well quality built. is very nice. Yeah. It's it's kind of heavy, but it's um, you know it's got the aluminum top there. It has no uh, kind of lip around the edge, so you can, like, it's probably easy to clean if you get a lot of schmutz in there because it's the edges are right there and just kind of blow it right out. Obviously, Corsair has intended this to go with Corsair cases and you know and and, right, and gaming uh, rigs that sure, uh, it'll, it'll will match, match nicely with yep, those if you have that. Metal. So, all right. So, uh, would you recommend it? Try buy. I'd say buy. Yeah, yeah. I, I have to agree. If, if this you're is a gamer, nice. yeah, it's a, and, and yeah. It's, especially if you're picky about keyboards and you like the mechanical feel, definitely buy. Alex Gumpel, our flow. Why do they call you the flow master? Oh, uh, because on my business card I put internal video workflow, and then someone ran with it. That's what he does. No, internal flow video workflow, work whatever. He whatever that it. means. <laughs> workflow. What's that? <laughs> Thank you, Alex. The Corsair Vengeance. It's a K60. There's also K60. a K90 that we have um, that we might be reviewing. Okay. But this is the it's lower. It's 30 one. better. It's 30 better. Yes. Man, it's, it's probably more expensive too. Performance FPS mechanical gaming keyboard. Thank you, Alex. Really appreciate it. Our show today brought to you by our friends at Netflix. Do you, you watch Netflix? I do. You better. I've Netflix. been watching Star Trek. Yes, that's right. The, uh, in fact, the original Star Trek's mm -hmm. on there yeah. now, and they have on Netflix the uh, revised one where they've improved, the digital backgrounds are improved, the clocks and all that stuff. I don't care for the, the CGI, skeptic. but I like the models, but the HD is nice. It does look. It's really beautiful. It was filmed, obviously, so right. that when they... When they uh, uh, restored it, they were able to get back most of the uh, high quality uh, from the original film. That's just one of thousands of TV shows, uh, movies, uh, documentaries on Netflix. I want you to go to netflix.com slash twit and try it free for 30 days right now. $7.99 and uh, if you like it, uh, there's a keyboard in your future. There it is. <laughs> if you like it, <laughs> you, you're going to be very happy. It plays on your Xbox, your PS3, your Wii, your laptop, your iPad, your iPhone, your Android phone, your Android tablet, and on and on and on. I got it on a Roku box, on an Apple TV, and on my Google TV, all in the same television set. Netflix, you got to have it, baby. If you already have it, please tell a friend. Netflix.com slash twit. Our third review is of a kind of an interesting uh, product. Brian Burnett, the, what is it? Angry Hippo? Pink Hippo? Cranky Hippo. Cranky Hippo. <laughs> <laughs> Our technical director is going to review, no, not this camera, but this, the pop-up flash from Grayson, or Graceline, Grasslon, Grasslon. Uh, take it away, Brian. Hi, I'm Brian Burnett from Twit, uh, here to show you the Grasslon pop-up flash diffuser. Uh, this is called the Spark Pop-Up Flash. It's the Model 4500, uh, listed at $39.95 on Grazalon's site. And, uh, but I did find it for $34.99 on Amazon. So what this little device is supposed to do is you attach it to the top of your DSLR, which I'm using my T3i right now. Um, this will work on any hot shoe mount uh, for Canon, Nikon, uh, Olympus, but uh, not if you have a Sony camera, so just a little FYI. So how this works is it covers your pop-up flash on your camera, it reflects into a mirror in here, and then it diffuses the flash, uh, so you don't get as much harsh shadows uh, along the edges and a little bit less uh, blown out highlights in some of your photos. And uh, let's take a quick look at what came out with uh, Alex's photo shoot that I did. So that's without the pop, uh, without the Graslin flash. You can see it's a lot sharper and a lot brighter. And then with it, there's a little bit more tone, a little bit softer. His shirt isn't quite as blown out. So the pros of this Graslin Spark Pop-Up Flash, uh, it's light. 
it's relatively cheap for what you are getting. And the cons would be not a huge difference between this and the pop-up flash, kind of depending on the light. Um, and portability. If you're like me and you have a small camera bag and you've already put two lenses inside of it, uh, this, this is a little bit bulky and you might not want to carry it around with you. Um, so buy, try, or not buy? Uh, this is a try. Uh, it's, it's not a huge difference from just the regular pop-up flash, but uh, if, you're looking at, if you're doing portraits a lot and you just want something cheap that will diffuse a little bit of the light, this is a good choice. This has been the Grazalon Spark pop-up flash, uh, and I'm Brian. I'll see you next time on BYB. Thank you for that uh, review. I don't, I don't have a flash on this camera, so I don't think I'll, I'll use that. This is uh, actually, I guess I do, but I don't think it would, uh, it would fit on there. This is a camera I bought uh, oh, about six months ago that uh, our friend Chris Marquardt, a photographer Chris Marquardt, calls the Diva camera. It's the Fujifilm X100, and it was really a hot camera, still is in many ways, very expensive, $1,200, especially since it's not an interchangeable lens, it's not a DSLR, but it, it, it was the retro styling that people liked, especially with the optional leather case, you know, and uh, it just really feels good in the hands, and it has a very big sense of the APS-C, but at $1,200, I think a lot of people uh, turned their back on the Fujifilm X100. That's why this past winter, Fuji came out, I was just gonna hold it up and I'll put it back in the shot, Fuji came out with this. This is the Fujifilm X10, and it's half as much. Uh, in fact, if you saw shop around, you can find it at just a uh, shade over $500. Uh, I really like the form factor on this. It's a magnesium body with some plastic touches. It has that retro feel. You really feel like you're using an old Leica, but it is a digital camera like its big brother, the X100. It has a viewfinder like the X100. Although one thing that's missing from the X10, one of the ways they save money, it doesn't have a video tap. So this is an, a purely optical viewfinder. It does zoom when you zoom, and that's one of the things that this camera actually does better, believe it or not, than the X100. Instead of a single fixed focus lens, it has a, a zoom lens. Now watch this. I turn the camera on by turn it, opening the lens a little bit uh, and then zooming it in and out. It zooms in a range from 28 millimeters, fairly wide angle, to 112 millimeters, fairly telephoto. And I found I was able to get a lot of shots with this camera that I wasn't able to get uh, without walking a lot closer with the X100. Uh, the X10 has some other nice features. The negative, of course, is it's a smaller sensor. It's only a, a, a two-thirds inch sensor. Now, that's bigger than most point-and-shoots. And, and uh, that's really, this is intended for the kind of the, the pro point-and-shoot or the, or the high-end point-and-shoot uh, market. It has what uh, uh, Fujifilm is calling an EXR sensor. It's kind of an interesting sensor. 12 megapixels like its big brother, but it has some ca interesting capabilities. If you're willing to take 6 megapixels, half the megapixels, they can actually uh, imp improve either the sensitivity, uh, so if you're in the dark or a dark situation, by taking half the megapixels, they can improve the sensitivity, they can improve the dynamic range, uh, so they can actually make the picture look better, but at the cost of about half the uh, megapixels. It's a, a kind of unique uh, sensor layout that is, uh, that is uh, unique to Fujifilm, and I actually liked it. I, I'll show you some of the pictures I took. One of the things that I did like about the X100 that this camera duplicates is the dials reflect a lot of the settings that you might use, mechanical dials for um, uh, exposure, um, a, a control so you can go up or down two stops with just a, a turn of the dial here I'll show you right here on this dial here uh, this uh, gives you a choice of a variety of different shooting modes including 1080p 30 frame video very good video an advanced mode that does some interesting things including a built-in panorama shot and I'll show you some of those panoramas you also have the EXR mode in, in auto mode EXR will choose the best mode to shoot in um, it also has macro capability of shooting up to about half of an inch and then program shutter and aperture priority as well as full manual. Although for most of the EXR features, you'll have to shoot an automatic. So uh, some pros might not like it. Yes, it does have a, a pop-up flash right there. Not super powerful, very similar to the X100. And uh, it also features a hot shoe like the X100. So you can put on your own flash if you should choose. Exposure lock, expo uh, focus lock, uh, They've improved some of the controls, similar controls to the X100 on the back, but there were complaints, for instance, about the size of this button in the middle. It's been slightly enhanced to make it a little easier to push. I think a lot of the things people complained about in the X100 have been fixed in the X10 
for half the price. Let me show you uh, some of the pictures. I'll log in here to my uh, computer uh, that I've pulled off. Now, this is the macro mode, shooting at about half an inch away. Um, let me show you uh, the videos. This was our staff meeting earlier today, and I think I have uh, a video of uh, the staff meeting. Or maybe I don't. Um, yeah, here we go. You get a sense of uh, the video. It has a built-in mic. does not have a mic connector. But I think the quality is quite good, and this was just under natural sunlight. Good, it's great. Burke made the table good. That works. Yeah, yeah. The table was bad before, now the table's good. One of the things that this camera can do while you're shooting, because it has a mechanical zoom, is actually zoom while you're shooting. So you can change the focal length while you're shooting. I'll show you some more pictures. Here's another macro shot quite close up. Um, this is the panorama shot I was talking about and the advanced feature. You don't have to shoot the pictures. One of the things that's very cool about this camera, it can do seven frames a second. Seven frames a second. So what you do is you turn on the panorama mode and just move the camera smoothly and it will capture and stitch it together in camera. And really, uh, the images are quite good. It was very easy. It just took a few seconds to shoot uh, these, these panorama shots. And you have quite a bit of control over what direction you're going, whether it's horizontal or vertical and, and so forth. So if you like shooting panoramas, that built-in panorama feature is quite good. These shot were shot all in the EXR mode where the camera chose, uh, for instance, uh, to expose for the gear. And you can see the dark areas. There's actually a lot of detail in those dark areas. It did a good job of picking those up. Uh, here's a shot that has a lot of light and uh, dark. And as you see, it has a fairly good dynamic range. The EXR will, in fact, enhance the dynamic range if it senses that it's a shot with a lot of brightness and darkness, as these shots are here in our studio where we have some pretty bright lights. I've been very happy with this camera. It is only a two-thirds inch sensor. It's not a full-frame sensor. It's not even the APS-C sensor that's in the Fujifilm X100. But it is a bigger sensor than you'll find on most point-and-shoot cameras. Some people have complained that Fuji uh, oversaturate colors. I don't think these are oversaturated if you look at them. I think they uh, look pretty true to life, and the detail is uh, excellent. I, I have to say, I think this is, this is a night shot, and it wasn't, this was all natural light. You see some grain. If you use the EXR mode, it will enhance by taking three separate shots or even more and then merging them together to uh, get a less grainy, higher ISO shot. You can see some grain, but it's, it's, it's pretty good. Here's another... Uh, night shot. This is all natural lighting, uh, and it did. It does a pretty good job. I have to say, I've been very happy uh, with the quality of images. Uh, I don't think these are oversaturated. In fact, this looks somewhat desaturated. It was a gray day. Uh, I think the camera, the colors rendition is very good. So uh, to sum up, the Fujifilm X10 between five. It's list price six hundred bucks. You should be able to find it for as little as five hundred nine dollars if you shop around. Uh, the pros on this. Uh, I think the EXR sensor is very interesting and can do some pretty amazing things. The image quality is excellent, the color rendition excellent, and I like the additional features, the things like the built-in panorama, the ability to do high dynamic range right inside the camera using those extra megapixels. Uh, I think the 1080p uh, video is excellent on this. It shoots very good video, but that's comparable to other cameras in its price range, uh, like the uh, S100 from uh, Canon. Um, the, the cons, uh, well, a couple. Uh, you don't have to use the optical rangefinder. In fact, it's nice to have an optical rangefinder in cases where the sun is so bright you can't use the LCD. This LCD does turn on, though. If you're going to take a picture, you are able to, to uh, preview the shot in the LCD. And just like uh, the uh, X100, you can get a lot of information about that shot right on the LCD. One nice thing about this rangefinder, it zooms when you zoom the lens. So uh, you are able to look through optically and see roughly what you're getting. But that's a negative of all rangefinders is because of parallax, you aren't getting exactly the same shot that you're going to get in camera. So for the most accurate rendition, you're going to want to look at the LCD. Nevertheless, in very bright sunlight where it's hard to see the LCD, it's nice to have a, a rangefinder. That's a really nice feature. Some people might complain about the on-off um, switch, which is right here in the lens. I found that pretty good. It's about a little less than a second to... Uh, get up to shooting mode. It's very quick. Focus is very accurate and very quick. Um, this lens cap does not attach, so I guess that's another con. It was hard for me to find many cons. On uh, the pro side, I think this is an excellent looking camera. I love the retro styling. You'll feel very good. It has a silent mode, which makes it very good for street shooting. No clicks, no pops, no whirs, no zizzes, and no mirror to move out of the way. So when I take a picture with this in silent mode, in fact, let me, let me do so right now, and you'll, you, you'll hear you can't hear a thing which makes it great for sneaking up on people and 
taking pictures. I like this for a street uh, street photographer because it's fairly unobtrusive and yet very good images. I'd say absolutely uh, I'd give it a bike. It's, co it's comparable to uh, maybe the G12 or the uh, S100 from Canon. Uh, Nikon has some cameras that are comparable, um, but I think it competes very well against them in roughly the same uh, five to $600 price range. This is the Fujifilm X10. I was very pleased. I'm going to be sorry to send it back, but fortunately I do have its, its big brother to console me which is also a very pretty little camera. All right, let's bring Nicole Lee, our producer, in here because it's time for some feedback. Nicole's been collecting your emails and uh, has uh, some to read for us and can tell us what's coming up on future episodes uh, before you buy. Hi, Nicole. Great to, great to have you once again. We're going to plug Nicole's uh, microphone in there. Hello. Now, here's Nicole Lee, our producer. Hi, how Hi, are you? I am great. Thank you for letting me review this. I know Tony probably really wanted it. He said that you had the one before because that. Because I have the you X100, probably I think be I'm the right a guy. Good fit I was to very impressed. That. We'll let Tony borrow it before we send it back to Fujifilm. I think he, I'd be very interested to see what he does with it. He's such a great photographer. Yes. So we've had plenty of emails, lots and Thank lots you. of emails. Just BYB at twit.tv. Yes. So um, I think a couple of episodes ago, you asked about feedback for an e-reader show. Yeah. Because Tom has had suggested He's that he wanted doing, an e show, doing yeah. one. And uh, there were like 15, 20 emails saying, we would love it. Okay. Two or three emails didn't like the idea because they weren't into the whole book. Thing? You don't, don't have know, to watch every show we do. Uh, but most, the majority of them did, did seem very enthusiastic Good. about an e-reader show. Okay. Another sort of correction. I haven't gotten back from Chad yet, but um, just wanted to point out from just as Joshua said that just wanted to send you a little correction okay. on the HFG10 review. That's the camera that we use. We're using right now here in right. the studio. And ac according to Chad, that um, with its built-in 32 gigabyte memory, it will record for an hour. Okay. Joshua says no. It records up, up to three hours. Okay. So depending on the mode, and I depending think that's, on the mode. I think that's what we said. It's a, a high quality mode, about an hour. But if you do right. a lower quality, well, version, he says even at the higher quality, it can it's record three hours. for three hours. Thirty-two so, meg gigs. That's great. Ten gigs enough. an hour. Okay. Fair enough. Got it. Right. And then this great. It's great to get emails from all across, or all around the world. And this one email from Steve from Swindon, England. Swindon. Yeah, Swindon. Yeah. And uh, he says that it's a great show. He loves it. And he was thinking it was great that he reviewed the Dyson vacuum. Like, he loves that vacuum review. <laughs> it's a great vacuum. I it's, still love that vacuum. <laughs> maybe it's because he's from England and Dyson's a, That's right. a, a British, British company. British product. All right. And he was thinking, how about some other product, uh, project, uh, products for review? I have Kitchen some stuff gadgets. That's, yeah, that's not, Juicers. that's not a computer. That's not Blenders. a camera. Blenders. We're going to do that. You got and, um, it. And he you was got very it. enthusiastic. It gives me an excuse to buy some more uh, home, home uh, stuff. And he was saying, you said you're a great coffee geek. Maybe some coffee... Good idea. Things, I'll tell you what. Coffee gadgets? We will review. There is a, a <laughs> Kickstarter project that I bought into, the Cone, K-O-N-E. It is a filter cone made of stainless steel Ooh. for design to work with Chemexes, but uh, I bought, they make, they're also going to make a ceramic pot. As soon as that comes, we'll do a review of that, the AeroPress, which I like, and some other alternative I ways of making coffee. I think that would be a, a really interesting... And we'll have a our, taste test. Sure. Our audience loves Everybody but John, because he doesn't drink. The Twit audience loves coffee, so well, I think doesn't? that would be that would be a great addition. <laughs> okay. And um, those are the, some of the highlights. Some, some other emails were very long, so I couldn't uh, well, we read all of them. Thank you. We thank you but, very much um, for your emails. We appreciate it. We do read them all, yes. even if we don't read them all on the air. Yes, I do read them all. Coming up, we do have a lot of interesting products. Good. The Can Olymp I put in my dibs for anything okay, I like? Go okay. ahead. Go ahead. No, no, say it, and I'll tell you. Um, the Olympus OMD. Mm. Tony has already grabbed that. Though. Okay. All right. The Parrot AR Drone 2.0. Who's got that one, John? I think we're going to offer it to some of the, our newer. That's the thing that flies. You know what we want to do is put a camera on that sucker and fly it, does, it, it over the It has a camera on it already. All right. It's, it's an HD cam on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's excited. John's excited. I want to get the Hero 2 from GoPro. Ooh. Let's put that on. Would you put that on the yeah, list? Sure. I want to review that thing. GoPro. Here. Yeah. In fact, get the underwater one and I'll dive into the river. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Ever. It's not really a okay. Wait a minute. Is that a Ford? Oh, it's not parked there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and then um, uh, John was giving us the big gem box. So they, ha they have like a new... Ooh. It's a Jaguar that a used Jaguar. to be a Ford, but it does not count. Okay. The, the big jam the box big is jam out. Box. Did we yeah. get one of those? We're, we're going to get one next I'm week. excited to hear that. They're hearing rave reviews. I have the baby jam box. I'll this bring my baby one. in, and you can compare big, it to the, the jumbo. The baby box. versus All right. big jam box. Good, good, and good. a lot more... 
you know, there, there are a few new phones coming up. That's when we want you to send us emails and say, what do you want us to review? And if, as you could tell, it doesn't have to be a tech gadget. We'll review anything. If it's kind of gadgety. Anything. Yeah, anything. Sure. Yeah. We'll do it. Be a lot of fun. <laughs> a lot of fun. Yes. Uh, thank you, Nicole Lee, for putting this together. Thank, thank you all you. for watching. Uh, if you want to see more of any of the show, products that we do, we put all the reviews up in their entirety on YouTube. Our YouTube channel is youtube.com slash twit. In fact, all our shows are up there. We do before you buy uh, Thursday evenings about 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, it's kind of late for uh, those of you in Swindon. Uh, but if you want to tune in, we'd, we'd love we'll to have you. It's right times. about midnight. We'll be changing this, the time slot of this now, show. Now, that's going to happen the week of July 2nd. Yes. We're moving from Thursday to Tuesday, Tuesday. and from 5 p.m. Pacific to 3 p.m. And this is actually for a lot of you in Europe who asked us to have it at an earlier time. So 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 2200 UTC, starting July 3rd, I believe that Third. is. Because yes. we won't be here the 4th of July. July 3rd for our new time. Uh, before you buy. Yeah. So thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. Hope you like our new set. This is actually uh, here for another show that we're going to launch in the next few weeks. Stay tuned for that. But I think I, I like it. And we can have a contest. Who's going to park there every every time? We'll see. We'll see who parks. So thanks for joining us. Join us next week. Remember, you got to watch. Say it with me, Nicole. Before, before you, you buy. buy.